I'd like to talk to you today about geospatial decision support for the flower garden banks. Uh, in particular, I'd like to talk to you about a project we did for the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary, uh, providing scientific support for a boundary expansion analysis. Uh, the Flower Garden Sanctuary Advisory Committee formed a group called the Boundary Expansion Working Group. And that working group had representatives from different industries and different, um, different values like research, education, um, oil and gas extraction, fisheries, uh, and those different industry representatives worked together to uh, consider expanding the National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, we looked at a series of um, 14 banks in the northern Gulf of Mexico and evaluated their ecological significance. Uh, the way we did this was to apply a biogeographic assessment framework. It's a place-based approach to managing natural resources. Uh, it's very GIS oriented and will look very familiar to this audience here. Uh, it's about pulling together all the information that we have and integrating it into a way where we can analyze it together at multiple scales and in multiple different ways. Uh, and what we do generally is to collect the geospatial information for an area, conduct different sorts of ecological analysis, and then produce products that will support management decisions. So we're directly in the business of science to support management. Um, these products often are reports or data sets, uh, but in this case it was a geospatial analysis where we worked with the Boundary Expansion Working Group to develop a proposal for expanding the National Marine Sanctuary. In this area, we had about 600 ROV and submersible dives that had taken place. And from these dives, we had a series of about 2,000 different ecological observations, uh, about 20,000 specific coral observations of uh, important, relevant species uh, that we wanted to try and manage for. Uh, in addition to those, we had uh, transect analysis, detailed analyses of certain places within the study area, um, but not transects broadly distributed across the study area. Similarly, we had small footprints where photographic analysis had been conducted, and finally, information about grouper distributions. So we looked at this information, piled it together to give us an ecological context for the study area. And we also developed what we called core sensitivity zones. This is essentially a kind of a rugosity test. We were looking for high structural complexity as this is the area that represents habitat for the important deep sea coral species we were looking to protect. So we took these two elements, the in situ observations and the habitat modeled, uh, and combined that with information on human use distribution. We looked at oil and gas extraction, we looked at fishing information through the VMS, and we looked at shipping information through the AIS. Uh, combine those together to give us a footprint of human use intensity, and then set about developing a decision support system where we could avoid conflicts with human uses while protecting the natural resources that we felt were important. The way we did this geospatial decision support was to apply a specific tool called Marxan and a specific statistical test called simulated annealing. Marxan is a decision support tool which we use to identify networks of ecologically important areas. It was designed at the University of Queensland. It's not a GIS system itself, uh, but it will do spatial analysis. It's designed to find efficient solutions to complex problems, with the idea being that if you want to optimize space for one thing or 10 things, you may be able to calculate exactly where things are most optimal. But when you're looking at, say, several hundred different species distributed across a diverse area, uh, the problem of how to represent all of those species and ecological elements while avoiding human use becomes incredibly complex. Uh, so we rely on statistical sampling to consider different possible alternatives and evaluate those for efficiency. The way that works is that we divide a study area up into a series of analysis units. 
and then give analysis units values such as the ecological and biological representation of the human uses, the area involved and the perimeter involved in the analysis units. That enables us to set an objective function where we say solutions are more effective when they are clustered together, when they have smaller perimeters. And they're more effective when they have smaller area, but they're only effective when they reach ecological objectives that we set aside specifically and best represented when avoiding human use. So putting all those three arguments in together, we then conduct a statistical sample over space. What we did for this project and what we do for most is to develop a series of representation goals for each of the ecological elements that we're trying to protect uh, and then look at different levels of protection. Uh, here we considered four different sets of representation criteria which gives us four different results from the decision support system. These are those four results from that system. Essentially what we did is we look at about a trillion different examples of different sets of analysis units and determine which sets of analysis units best meet those particular criteria. In the four different sets of criteria, there were higher and lower objectives for ecological representation and as a result, the results are more inclusive with higher representation criteria and smaller with lower representation criteria. In addition to optimizing to try and find the best solution for representing a certain set of management goals within a minimum space, we also look at what we call cumulative significance. The idea here is that there could be lots of really good ways to represent a certain set of ecological criteria. So what we're trying to do is look at the different possibilities, the, the choice, spatial choice, in representing good scenarios. And these charts, these maps, tell us where there is more and less choice in finding efficient solutions. Uh, here in the first set, you see a lot of red. That's indicating, oh, that won't work on this monitor. Do I have a pointer? Okay, so we see a lot of red in the first example. The model is very constrained. There's only one good choice for this uh, or very few good choices for this scenario. But on the, le on the right, you see that lighter blue. This indicates that there was a lot more choice there for how you would represent your ecological criteria. What we do with this information is to take it back to the stakeholder group, to work with, each, with the combined group of stakeholders to review the results of the geospatial decision support system along with all of the GIS information that we compiled in order to enable the system. So we can see at each bank, when we're looking at where to draw polygons, where each ecosystem is located, where each coral colony was observed, uh, and where each of the human uses is distributed. Uh, so this enables us to fine tune the analysis results. So what we did was to, to work in an interactive, participatory GIS setting with the group of people to refine polygons to develop a proposal for expanding the National Marine Sanctuary. This was our result. We came up with a set of polygons essentially proposing that the sanctuary be expanded to four times its size and to include 12 additional new banks within the National Marine Sanctuary. We brought this proposal from the Boundary Expansion Working Group to the Sanctuary Advisory Council where it was voted on and approved. At that point, it becomes more of a policy question than a geospatial analyst question. So as a geospatial analysis team, we handed off our product at that point to the Sanctuary Advisory Council and to the sanctuary staff who moved forward with this recommendation uh, through the process of expanding the sanctuary. One more thing that we did before finishing was to take this final proposal and evaluate it for its ecological and biological representation. So now that we have a set of polygons that's not derived specifically based on ecological criteria, but that was derived through group decision making, we go back to the spatial information and check to see how well we did in representing all of that spatial information in the polygons we all agreed on. 
And these were those results of reviewing exactly what we represented in our final recommendation. And that was our process for advising the expansion of the National Marine Sanctuary in the Flower Garden Banks. Thank mm -hmm. you.